Thank you, Andy. Good morning. Today, I am very excited to tell you about Rice Lab, a new lab we just started at Berkeley. So Rice Lab follows AmLab, a six-year project that many of you here are familiar with. So AmLab's goal was to build the next generation of open source data analytics stack to be used across industry and academia. And it was founded both by the government and over 40 companies across all sectors in the economy. AmLab was very successful, certainly much more successful than I originally anticipated. AmLab is the birthplace of Apache Spark, the reason we are all today here. In addition, AmLab was the birthplace of a few other open source projects, such as Apache Mesos and Alucio, formerly known as Stachion. RISE stands for Real-Time Intelligent Secure Execution. And the main, to put things into context, while AmLab was focused primarily on interactive advanced analytics on batch data, RISE Lab is focused on real-time decisions on live data. RISE Lab is a five years project, just started this January, it includes 12 faculties across artificial intelligence, system security, and architectures. And it's already counting 11 founding sponsors. The main premise behind RISE Lab is that the data is only valuable as a decision it enables, it enables. And you can see this everywhere. You hear, you read, that more and more companies today are using the data to make decisions to improve their business processes, application services, or to provide new ones. You just heard an example this morning in the talk from Salesforce. So what does this mean? Well, this means that we want faster decisions, since faster decisions are in general better than slower decisions. We also want decisions on fresh data, since decisions on fresh data are better than decisions on stale data. Michael earlier gave you a sense of that. And finally, we want decisions on personalized data, because personal decisions are better than decisions made on aggregate data. As such, the goal of the RISE Lab is to support real-time decisions on live data with strong security. By real-time, we mean decisions within milliseconds. By live data, we mean that we want to make decisions on the current state of the environment rather than the old state. And by strong security, we mean privacy, confidentiality, and integrity. Indeed, Privacy and confidentiality are critical for organizations to get the trust of their users. And by getting the trust, this trust, the users are more comfortable to share their data with these organizations, which in turn put this organization in position to provide better services to their users. So here is a typical decision system, which consists of two main components. It's an environment, one is an environment, which consists of a set of endpoints, typically distributed across the globe. This can be end users or end devices. And these endpoints send queries to the decision system, and in they, in they get back decision. They get decision back. In addition, these endpoints also send a bunch of observations, feedback, outcome from the previous decisions to this decision system, which takes this information and pre-process it to create some intermediate data, such as a machine learning model. And then it's employing a decision engine to answer the queries based on this intermediate data. If you look at this figure, you can notice two feedback loops. One feedback loop takes all the information from the endpoints and updates this intermediate data. And we are talking about decision on live data, this is what we are referring to. How fast you update the intermediate data based on the information from the environment. And here we are targeting latencies of minutes or even seconds. The second feedback loop takes the decisions themselves. And when we are talking about real-time decisions, this is a feedback loop we are, we are considering. And here we are, talk, we, are, we are targeting decision latencies as low as 
milliseconds. And of course, we want to do all of this securely. And here are two examples of the decision systems. One is a machine learning pipeline. And here, the pre-processing stage consists of a job training on the information received from the environment to build some machine learning model. This job can be a Spark job, and in many cases is. And then the decision engine, in this case, it's a model serving, which is the models which are built by the training job to answer the queries. Here is another example, and this is a reinforcement learning system. With the reinforcement learning systems, you constantly monitor and interact with the environment to learn a policy. That is, a mapping between the observation of the environment, the state of the environment, and some actions such that you can optimize for a desired outcome, like winning a game or driving safely. Now, in addition to the decisions being real-time, working on live data and being securely, there are a few things we want from these decisions. First, we want the decision to be intelligent. So we want to support complex decisions in uncertain environments. Think about fraud detections. Think about coordinating a fleet of drones in real time, like you've seen in the Super Bowl. We also want this decision to be robust, to handle complex noise, failures, and unforeseen inputs. So ideally, we want these systems to tell us, I never seen this input. I don't know what to do, instead of giving us the wrong decision. And finally, we want this decision to be explainable. As these decisions augment the human decision process or make decisions which impact humans, we naturally want to know why was the decision was made. Think about a machine learning algorithm takes a look at your x-ray and gives you a diagnosis. You want to know what was in this x-ray which made the machine learning algorithms give you that diagnosis. So in summary, the goal of the RISE Lab is to develop open source platforms, tools, and algorithms for intelligent real-time decisions on live data. And you, I just told you about a lot of requirements, quite high requirements. As you can imagine, this open very interesting research challenges. And here I am listing a few of them we are planning to work on. First is building a secure real-time decision stack, which is an open source platform, which is secure from ground up to support RISE applications. And one category of RISE application we are looking to support are reinforcement learning applications. A second dire direction is learning control hierarchies. So what this is about is to take many decisions, successive decisions, and group them in primitives. And we want to learn these primitives and make decisions on these primitives. This will considerably speed up the learning and training. And finally, share learning. This is about learning on data from different organizations without compromising confidentiality. It's almost like learning on data you've never seen before. So next, I'm only going to focus on the first uh, part, which is secure real-time decision stack. And here, a preliminary architecture, a preliminary stack. There are a few components here. In particular, is blue. There are three components I'm going to talk briefly about. The first component is what we call the RISE microkernel. This is a minimalist, high-performance execution engine. We want to be able to support both data flow and task parallel execution models. And we want to be able to schedule as many as 1 million tasks per second and tasks with lat latencies as low as milliseconds. The second component is ground, which is a central repository for models. It also provides you an API to capture the context in which data gets used and is produced. The status of this project, we are already working with some partners, Capital One, here, on this project. The last component is Time Machine. As the name, imply, as the name suggests, the Time Machine allows you to replay application at fine granularity. And this has lots of benefit. First, it can tremendously simplify development and debugging. And as you know, if you can't reproduce a bug, 
it is much easier to find the cause of that bug and fix it. Second, it helps you it provide robustness in the presence of the noisy data. Because you can simulate this noisy data by perturbing inputs, and then you can replay your algorithms against these perturbed inputs. It also helps you with explainability. Let's consider the previous example in which you have this uh, you know, machine learning algorithms, which gives you a diagnosis based on the X-ray. In order to understand what was in this X-ray, which, which led to that decision, to that diagnosis, you can set, you can pick a set of similar, you can look at a set of similar X-rays, some of them which led to a particular diagnosis and some of them which did not. And then you can look at the differences in, in, in these X-rays and see what features correlate with the diagnosis. Maybe it was the size of the organ, the position of the organ, the color, okay, or many of these features together. Finally, it helps you with security, and it can confirm vulnerabilities, you can replace the attack against your software. You can test for the security patches. Once you pass the system, again, you can replace the attack to see whether you patch fix the vulnerability. And of course, it helps with compliance auditing. Now, we are also planning to do quite a bit of work on the, on the, on the application side, frameworks. Apache Spark, we are going to, still planning to do quite a bit of work to improve its performance and security. And we also plan to build new systems. For instance, we are building Clipper, a model serving, a model serving system for Apache Spark and Scikit-learn, and models built with other systems. And Ray, which is, for, which is a framework which targets reinforcement learning applications. So in the remaining of the time, I'm going to talk about some of the work we've done in the space of the Apache Spark. In particular, I'm going to talk about two projects. First is Drizzle. The goal is Drizzle is to decrease the latency of streaming and machine learning algorithms by up of a factor of 10. Drizzle uses a set of techniques such as group scheduling to significantly reduce the overhead of scheduling on the master by pushing some of the scheduling work to, to the worker, distributed share variables, and so on. I'm not going to have time to go into the details of these techniques, but I'm going to share some results. So this is a Yahoo cloud serving benchmark. And this consists by, from one query. And this query is basically computes the counts for different ad campaigns over 10 seconds windows. And this is a delay experienced by Spark. And after the window has closed, how long it takes until the account becomes available. On the x-axis, you have the number of ad impressions coming in the system from 1 million to 24 million. On the y-axis, you have the median of this latency. And as you can see, at least for this particular query, the Spark um, latency it's grows from around 650 milliseconds to uh, 1 second and, uh, I think, 800 milliseconds. How does Drizzle perform? Significantly better. So as you can see, even for 24 millions of events per second, Drizzle uh, latency is lower than, actually, in this case, is around 400 milliseconds. Now you may ask yourself, how this actually, OK, now this uh, works well with Drizzle, but how does it compare with other systems, streaming systems out there? And here I am also showing you the latency in the case of Flink, a system which you know is optimized for streaming, for streaming latency. So as you can see, Drizzle compares quite well. For low loads, it actually provides a lower latency and is pretty competitive for high loads. However, like you heard Michael earlier on, one of the best things about Spark is this unification. So the streaming in Spark uses the same execution engine, and it's using the same optimization engine, Catalyst. So you can actually take advantage of that. And here, next, I'm going to show you a new ver another version of Drizzle called Drizzle Opt, which is doing such optimization. And the optimization here is to reduce by on the mapper side. Instead, the mapper sending every record to the reducers to compute these counts 
is going to compute the partial counts for each R campaign and send only these partial, resu this partial results to reducers. This dramatically reduces the sh shuffle overhead, the communication overhead, and therefore reduces the latency. And here are the results. So in this case, for the highest load, Drizzle opt, opt provides a latency which is 15 times lower than original Spark, and also provides a lower latency than unoptimized Drizzle and Flink. Now, here is another example, and in this case, I am considering a machine learning workload. AGD, Stochastic Gradient Descent, as you know, it's a very popular machine learning algorithm. And here I'm considering a fixed load, and on the x-axis, I vary the number of machines. And on the y-axis is, is the time spent on one iteration. You should expect that as I have more machines for the same workload, the time for, it for iteration will decrease because I'm going to have less work to do on each node. And this is the case as you increase the number of machines from 4 to 16. However, if, after you increase farther from 16 to 1 to 8, surprisingly, the time per iteration grows. And why is this? Well, this is because now the overhead, the scheduling overhead and communication overhead starts to dominate. How is the result performing in this case? Quite well. So in this case, as expected, the time for iteration decreases. So for 128 nodes, you have a 6x less time spent on the iteration. And this directly uh, translates in the running time for their job. You are going to get the job running six times faster. Many of these techniques from Drizzles, we are planning to merge in Apache Spark. So expect further improvements for the latency of the streaming in Spark. The second uh, project, I'm going to say only a few words. It's called Opaque and it provides full data encryption, authentication, and verification using hardware enclaves such as Intel SGX. This is a po very powerful security solution because it can protect you even if the operating system or the VM, the virtual machine, is compromised. It provides an even stronger um, security mode called oblivious mode. So this will protect you even against sophisticated attacks, which can extract the information just looking at the pattern of access of your data, even if the data is encrypted. You can see the data. But they can observe the access pattern to memory over and over the network. Today, Opaque supports most of Spark SQL functionality. And if you are interested, there is a talk given by Wenting uh, later today. So in summary, we have the, go the goal of RISE Lab is to develop open source platforms, tools, and algorithms for intelligent real-time decisions on live data. We have already a few promising results and you know, expect much more over the next five years. Thank you.